All right, Michael, you got the answer? I'm ready to try to figure it out. All right, let's go. Let's try the first one. I feel like the first one's going to go rather well. So we need a pair of strategies so that no player is motivated to switch. Mm -hmm. And you told us they were pure strategies. So we actually have a nice algorithm for doing this, which is we can just check each one of them with the definition. Mm -hmm. But um, but in the case of Prisoner's Dilemma, I think a natural place to start would be that minus six, minus six. Mm -hmm. So let's say that A chooses the second row and B chooses the second column. Let's see if that's a Nash equilibrium. So it, both players need to be happy. So if, would A be happier switching? If A switched, it would be getting minus nine, which is worse. So mm -hmm. A is happy where A is. And if B switches, B would be getting minus nine. So boom, Nash equilibrium. Done. Now, I didn't verify that other ones weren't a Nash equilibrium, but you didn't say find all of the Nash equilibrium. You just said find, well, you did say find the. So you kind of implied that there's just one. Right. But actually, that's true. But you don't have to check this because we already went through an exercise where we, where we knew the answer was minus six, minus six. And the way we did that is we noticed that for A, defecting the second row is always better than this. Right. And that in particular, right. this row strictly dominates this row. Right. Which implies that uh, if I picked anything on this row, I would rather move to the other row. And you can see it. Minus one, up, oh, zero is better. Minus nine, up, oh, minus six is better. That's what it means to be strictly dominated. So I'd never pick this row anyway. And the same argument for B for this column. So you'll notice that by getting rid of the things that are strictly dominated, the only thing we're left with is this. And it turns out, in fact, to be a Nash equilibrium. So this is correct. So you just told me how to do my job, which makes me a little sad. Well, um, in this case. Because I already had the answer to this. But maybe, maybe you were signaling to me how I might attack this next problem. Maybe. 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 So A is choosing a row and gets the first number. So is there a row that, where, that dominates all the other rows? Uh, doesn't seem that way. Mm -hmm. But maybe B, B, oh, okay, let's start with B. Maybe B, maybe there's a column that dominates all the other columns, but no, it looks like it's totally symmetrical. Yep. So strictly dominated doesn't necessarily help here. And by necessarily, I mean doesn't. So that was kind of mean. Thank you. All right. So, um, oh, but we have something else we could do. Yes. So there is a, the largest number that anybody can get is six. Mm-hmm. And there's a play where both of them can get the six. Yep. So there's no way they're going to want to switch away from that because everyone's getting their kind of maximum amount of reward. So A, bottom row, B, right column gets us a Nash equilibrium. And that is, in fact, correct. And you can see it because from here, I would always, it would always be worse for me and it would always be worse for me. So these are, in fact, the Nash equilibria for these two problems. Cool. They've seemed easier than I was expecting. Mm-hmm.